Hey, what's up, YouTube? Enforcer 5150 here, and what I did this last week was I actually bought two laptops, and I don't know, I might end up buying another. Um, mainly, um, I wanted to say at first, these two laptops, the Dell G5 and the HP Omen, the one that you're seeing here, are actually really freaking identical in performance um there's a few ups and downs on each ones um i would say that if you were to buy any one of these two laptops i'm gonna say right here in the beginning is that you would want to actually go with the dell g5 um it's not off of just personal preference uh it's just the price points uh only some places actually have this hp omen at a a deal and the only real reason that you're going to want to go with this laptop the hp omen is either one you're actually wanting to do more than just game you want to you know do multimedia also uh stream or do anything like that such as if you you know, create videos, gaming videos like I'm, I'm doing in these. You're definitely going to want to go with the HP Omen over the Dell. However, the Dell can get a lot more frames per second in some in some cases. That's pretty much what I I found out when I was going through a lot of these tests between them all. In uh, at max quality, they're pretty they're pretty much identical. The HP Omen actually gets maybe two three frames per second more in some places, and that's on its highest settings in 1080p. That's not to say that either one of these two laptops are bad or you know not great with gaming. Uh, one of the main reasons that I like the HP Omen versus the Dell G5 is that you actually get a dedicated uh, GPU. You get the 1060 that's not connected with a shared Intel graphics card, which what I was able to find out is that I was able to actually connect to say my TV and I was able to turn off the laptop monitor on the g5 i was unable to do that and no matter what i tried to do it was always trying to stay connected with that intel graphics card and it would always be a mirror of what was on the main screen with the hp omen i was able to connect it i was able to turn off i was able to i was able to turn off the main display and i was able to play just on my tv or you know external monitor another thing that you want to also put in consideration is that this one the hp omen actually has a mini display port so that means you can get over the 60 frames per second if you're connected to an external monitor and if i went ahead and connected my main monitor which is 165 hertz i'll be able to actually get 165 hertz or at least 144 so i can get those additional frames per second now where the real performance gains come from in the hp omen is when you're not fully maxed out when you go bring it down a little bit or say uh, medium settings like here uh, you'll see that you get a lot more frames per second with the HP Omen than you do with the Dell G5, which is contrary to what you see with the highest settings. And, you know, it, it really utilizes more of the CPU because it's not always maxing out at the 100 Celsius. Now, my primary concern is the multimedia because I do a lot of uh, 3D work and stuff like that. So having additional CPU cores is actually one of the things that I need more so the hp omen for me would be a better trade-off because i can do both you know just game and you know get some of these decent frames per second and i can change it to working in adobe premiere or something like that and i have all those extra cores to be able to render off of so if i'm out on the go and i needed to render something get something uploaded to youtube i'm not going to be waiting as much time because I can actually use all those extra cores. Now, when you're working with 3D programs and stuff like that, the cores are definitely going to be your primary choice. So that would make the HP Omen definitely above the other one. Now, when you look at the Dell G5, everything is great on it. However, you're getting more frames per second. So, you, you know, I mean, you're, you're, only, you're kind of splitting hairs when you're looking at, you know, the performance of, you know, just the frames per second on, you know, max quality because they're going to be different no matter what ones you get. Especially what I wanted to mention is that the boost is going to be different on each one. One thing I did notice on the, the Dell was that whenever you hit the CPU of, you know, 
90 to 100, if you hit 100, your your megahertz will drop, and it will it it also drops your frames per second at the same time. With the with the HP Omen, I didn't hit 100 degrees Celsius, but it did throttle down a little bit. If you were looking at the cooling, and these are uh, keep in mind that both of these laptops were tested in the exact same room the exact same conditions. I had it on, on my regular laptop table that has holes in the bottom of it so that it, you can get some air breathing through it for a laptop or something like that. But it's not a cooler laptop, like a laptop cooler. So if you notice on the Dell videos that the Celsius is almost always 100% or 95 plus. And every time it hits 100, it usually will drop down. And like I said, you see it on the... HP Omen as well, but not as much. And, you know, the CPU does get throttled down. And I think in the long run, that's going to hurt you on a laptop because in the long run, it's just going to wear down that CPU and it's going to be less powerful in the future. And, you know, more likely that it's not going to work anymore or die out. But if you're someone like me that will likely buy another laptop within the next five years, it's really not going to matter that much if you're you know, maxing out the CPU all the time or even overclocking it for that matter. So if you're one that keeps your laptop for, say, 10 or 15 years, you're definitely going to be one that wants to really be concerned about how hot your CPU is getting. Now, if you look at the two compared, you're going to get more frames per second. There's no lie. You're going to get more frames per second on the Dell. And I've seen upward to like 10 frames per second more, depending on what kind of settings you're using, high, medium, or low. But to mind you that on the Dell, I always was at, you know, 98 uh, plus 100 Celsius. I didn't have a G, uh, CPU cooler or anything running with this. I'm just using the plain stock, you know, ventilation that is basically on your laptop. And it actually, the I, I was kind of surprised because when I would look at the Dell, it has more it had like more open spots it seemed but those huge fans on the bottom of this laptop the hp omen it has it actually it kept it a lot cooler and with a laptop that's kind of important to me now i know this video is just going to be really short and shorter than my other ones and i really apologize um, or less information, it's mainly because these things performed so close to each other, there really wasn't much of a comparison for me to do, and except for talk about what <laughs> I was going to do. Um, the main thing I wanted to get to everybody is that there, you know, the, the differences between these two laptops, uh, I do enjoy both of these laptops. I don't disrecommend any of the two because they are both, you know, 1060s, GTX, 6 gigabytes, you know, one's going to perform a little bit better, one's going to be hotter, one's going to possibly last longer. Um, well, they're way to go. But at this price, I remember I got the HP Omen at $999, right at the 1000 mark to stay under $1,000. The Dell was $949 US. And that brings me to saying that, you know, a 50 bucks more to get, you know, some additional cores for multimedia. I, I think it's it's worth it there, but if you're somewhere that where this is like a hundred and fifty dollars, like I've seen in the comments, where I was seeing it was like a thousand one hundred and fifty dollars ish, uh, around twelve hundred dollars is I think the MSRP for for this or what it's being sold at right now. I think at that price, the HP Omen is definitely not worth it. You're way better off going with the Dell. As far as the CPUs go and gaming performance. I really don't see much of a difference. I think a lot of the extra frames per second comes from actually having that integrated GPU when I versus the dedicated one. The Intel UHD actually takes over uh, during different processes. It keeps stuff in the background going so your main GPU isn't working as hard. I want to thank everybody for watching this video and definitely thank you for everybody that has subscribed. I noticed the other day that I hit 200 subscribers and for me, that's amazing. It's a huge milestone and I couldn't be more grateful to everybody that has subscribed. I also wanted to mention that I really apologize, but it looks like I will not be getting the 
2080 Ti at launch date. They were sold out by the time I got to it to be able to buy one for pre-order. Uh, I may just still buy just the regular uh, 2080 so I can do some benchmarks on that until the 2080 Ti's come out and I can pick up one of those. But that's a lot. Of, that's putting a lot of money into it. With all that said, I want to say thanks for watching. Take care and happy gaming.